Yo, I'm Colin. I'm Narika. And this is The Bench. World Cup Edition. Knockout Edition. Well, we're wrapping up the group stages. We're going into the knockout. Yeah, but it's knockout edition. Now. now it's the knockout edition. But there's so much that happened in the last round of group games. And we had to. Like, we had to speak about it. Yeah. There's no way we weren't speaking about mm-hmm. it. Um, but how are you doing, though, fam? I'm tired. Been a long week. Been it's an been emotional a very one. Long week. Yeah. It's be- Do you know why it's been emotional? Because of the World Cup. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's been an emotional one. I hate to say it. Yeah. But Qatar might have given us the best World Cup. I think everybody's saying that. They cooked one of the best World Cups out of nowhere. Absolutely no. I mean, everybody was like hoping for them to fail. And then all of a sudden, like, it's one of the best group stages I think we've ever seen in it's my one entire of, life. It's one of the best performances from African teams in the group stages. Yeah. So every African team got a win. At least three points. At least three points? I think so. Yes. Every African team in Tunisia, this World Cup. Yes. Cameroon. Every yes. African team got at least three points. Right. Won at least one game. Yes. And it was the last round of group games that yeah. wrapped up. And we are going into the round of 16 knockout for fours. Um, but, like, it's just been... Why well, I'm saying it's the best World Cup because African teams have been up. Only local coaches for the African team. So no African team has a foreigner as their coach. Okay. When last... Have you seen that or heard that? And the African teams collectively have scored 19 goals so far throughout the group stages, which is equaling um, Africa's best ever total. So there's only one other time. That they scored more than 19 goals. No, that we we scored 19 goals, which is the most. And now we beat that. And it's only the group stages. Mm. Don't worry. We're getting there. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So there's a lot of things that happen and we're going to go, I think we should go through the week in yeah, in order. In order. Because okay. of emotions. This, yeah. is, this is where we were. So first African team. Oh, also going into this third round of like the final round of group stage games, every African team had the possibility of qualifying out of the group into yeah. the knockout state. Like, ev- like every African team, if the if the, 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 the permutations and the results went their way, yeah. Could, if there wasn't a case where, like, like Qatar, for example, like, you just... Like, regardless no, of that like last this, game, this game you was, this, Everyone was playing for something in yeah. this game. So, Senegal beat Ecuador 2-1, yeah. which means that Senegal are now in the round of 16. So, going into this game, it was a must-win game for Senegal mm-hmm. to qualify out and a draw for Ecuador. And, like, if Ecuador drew, they went through. Senegal won. Senegal won. Yeah. Went, like, went through. And so it happens that Senegal won. Yeah. Two one. What do you think? Again, without their star man Monday, I feel like we're pushing that narrative and it's time to actually get it because mm-hmm. the team is performing without them. They look like so much of, like, a, a team that has been coached in a specific way to deliver winning performances. So, shout out to Lucise, you know. Uh, 100%. He's doing the things. He's been probably Senegal's longest reigning coach, and he's always produced performances 100%. with that team, you know. And it's like players, especially younger players like Saar, but then experienced players who didn't always used to get starts that are out there putting performances, and now they're out of the knockout rounds. One hundred percent. So the game went. Senegal went up one 0 with a Saar penalty. You yeah. just mentioned him. Then Casado from Ecuador. Mm. Equalized and it was one one, and then the whole continent was on. Like we were on. We're like, ah, no, not this again. Because like that draw meant Ecuador just yeah. pipped uh, Senegal, and then Captain Magnificent Kulabali came in with the winner immediately after, like to respond after uh, conceding that goal from Ecuador. Yes. So like you basically out, but then to have like that mental like fortitude to be. Like, no, we're still in this game. Yes. we like, not going to get down and out because we conceded the goal and then come back and win the game 2-1 immediately afterwards. It so, was amazing. The game ended 2-1. Ecuador finished second in their group. And this mm-hmm. is the first time since 2002 that they've qualified out of the group stages. Yeah. Which means going into the round of 16, they are going to be playing England. Yeah. Well, we think so because they're also under investigation. Damn. Yes. Senegal, like immediately after the win of the like after Ecuador, yeah. Um, they went like FIFA was investigating them because they broke World Cup regulations. Something about a press conference that only 
the coach appeared, but the coach was meant to appear with the player, and the player there was no player. Yeah, but team. I feel like that's not gonna really uh, determine them. Like they're not gonna get disqualified for that. Yeah, I don't think Qatar will allow yeah, that yeah. to happen. I feel like that's something you're probably gonna get slapped on the wrist, yeah, or fine or something. You know, 100%. something light. It's not gonna. I think it would be injustice in football if you don't allow Senegal to play, but they definitely are going to play. So Senegal are playing England, yeah. and I'm just going to say it. This is my hot take. It's a hate crime if you don't let Senegal win. Damn. What is a hate crime? Hate crime is a bit rough, you know? Well, I, yeah. I don't know. If you know like better, a better English term, then yes. Like, please slide through yeah. and tell me. But, like, that is my... Like, like you have to let yeah. the African team win. Yes, if you are African, we have to support Senegal. In well, the England have to let the African team win. That too, also. Yeah. Like, but Senegal will beat them, mm -hmm. even without Saudi money. And talking about letting an African team win, the next African team up this, in this past week was Tunisia yeah. against France. And I was out on the socials going, if France really cared about football, they would let Tunisia win. Look what happened. Tunisia won. Yeah. Tunisia beat France in a historic performance, 1-0. But Tunisia knocked out. Yeah, end of the day. Uh, I think they got knocked out because Australia won in their group, yes. you know, so it was based on another result. But then the you beat the world champions, you know. It was kind of like weird set up by the world champions in that game. They went into it thinking like Tunisia don't have their juice, but hey, bro, they won. You know, so shout out to Tunisia. You may not be through the knockout round, <laughs> but you have that a record a win. against the world champions. Similar to Super Final in 2010. A win is a win. A win is a win. The goal came from Wabi Kazri, and I think we've spoken about him previously. He's also, interesting fact, the first African player yeah. in World Cup history to score in three consecutive starts. Crazy. So, like, every time he started three matches three games, yeah. at a World Cup yeah. consecutively and scored. Yeah. Um, France did try to pull one back with the Griezmann goal, but then said no goal. Yeah, and it was crazy, like the 98 minutes or so. And so, football. But as I said, a win is a win. Yeah. As soon as you are knocked out, they're not going to the round of 16. But they did beat France, 1-0. Well, no. And we're going to ride on that. Big ups, Tunisia. Okay, but then so now we had Senegal take us on an up. Tunisia take us on a down, but then kind of like a... Mm like a medium up yeah. i don't know and then we went straight up after that when morocco were up against canada this was a tough group this was a tough group but we spoke about it in the previous episode one team is in like their golden era one team is still trying to pull it you know and i think yes. morocco proved it at the end of the day morocco also history makers i yeah. think they are history makers they are what they so when they got their first win it was the first win since the 1998 world cup yeah and this is definitely the first time they've made it out of the group stages, either in their history. No. Or this like since, second. yeah, since way back when. This is their you know? second time yeah. reaching the knockout stages. And why I'm saying the history makers is because they finished top of their group. Yeah, no. So facts over there. Finishing top of your group is not something that we see often from African nations. 100%. But when was the last time they made it out of the group stages? Um, way back when. If it was before 98, my friend. It's, <laughs> it's way back yeah. when. So Morocco beat Canada 2-1. This, Like we've said it before, we'll say it again. This is the golden generation of yeah. Moroccan football. And our boy, Ziyech, being brought back into the team mm. by their coach, opened the scoring yeah. with the second fastest goal by an African nation Crazy. in the World Cup crazy i'm not gonna lie i appreciate that stat but it's like now we're just making the stats for stats no, but, no the, but it's fine it's fine the first the person who's holding the first position is asimo Gian. he scored a goal the fastest goal for african nation yes. World Cup. so he's the second fastest. so he's the second fastest yeah. he is the second fastest so morocco is up i saw scenes because i was in morocco this year okay. now we're at the end of the year just in case you didn't remember um moroccans went crazy streets were packed mm. all over Moroccans in France, Moroccans Vibes. in Morocco, Vibes. Moroccans in Moroccans in Cote d'Ivoire, Moroccans everywhere were yeah. just like they celebrate celebrating the nation as they should have. They really should as have. They should have. I think we knew that Morocco was stronger than Canada. Yeah. Canada did put up a good fight. Like on paper as well as performances, you can see that Moroccan team is pulling out. Especially like ZH and them, the guys that have been brought back to yeah. the team. The longer the tournament is going on, the more 
we see as to why they're in the team in the starting eleven. So, and talking about their performance, Morocco might have a little bit of a battle as mm. in the round of sixteen game they do face Spain. Spain, crazy one, and I feel like that's a lot of like. There's too many narratives. Too many narratives over there because the Spain and Morocco are very close to each other. You know, some people travel across, you know, a lot of that stuff. Like, they share similarities, whatever. But then there's also, like, low-key beef, possibly. There you might know, be some Moroccan place Africa. for Spain yeah, and just, they just want to admit you it. You never know. You never know. So, I, I love to see it, you know. I love to see the narratives. So, we had three out of... We had three African nations yeah. and we, were, we went two for three. Yeah. But, like, three for three on winning. Yes. Okay. And then the next big game to come up to like round off, round it off was Ghana versus Uruguay. We spoke about it. Mm. It was the revenge match. Everyone spoke about it. I think the headlines this past week yeah. leading up to this game was Luis Suarez coming out and saying it's not his fault. That's crazy. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard in a very long time. That man is delusional. How are you not taking accountability? For, for basically taking a team outside of a World Cup. He and said, now, 20, 10 years later, you're just like, I've not grown as an individual. I've not realized my mistakes. I'm still a bad person, essentially. I think he just hates yeah, Africa. Yeah, I think it's hate. I, I think, think it's like... Hate. I wouldn't say an, hate Africa. He's an op. He's an op. He's just an op. He's an op. Okay, but, hate was yeah, too strong. It may, be, it may be hate, but you know what? At the end of the day, hate. He came, he came out, I think his statement went along the lines of, he can't be blamed for them missing the penalty. Yeah. My arg- okay, listen to my logic, right? You did something wrong in the game. Mm. Handball. You broke the rules. You then forced, which would have been a goal, yeah. a clear-cut goal in open play. You then, because of your decision make, poor decision-making, you forced Ghana to now take a penalty, mm. which means mindset, environment that you're in, yeah. pressure, all of, like, it's now a, like, not a cooked, but like a set up environment. Yeah. Whereas the initial attempt at goal was going to go in. Yeah. How can you not be accountable for no, forcing that situation? Like the fact that you wouldn't even admit that, yeah, no, me putting my hands up and stopping a goal was wrong. No, he, And then he could have said, yeah, but I didn't miss it. Like he could have just said like somewhat like, I, the one I did was wrong, but they still missed. So like, you know, then I would have been like, okay, whatever. I see growth. You admit it. Like, you know, but he was just like, hell no. <laughs> My thing out. is, Ghana missed that penalty. He has to take some level of accountability because yeah. he forced that penalty to happen. Yeah. And talking about penalties, going into this game, um, the game did end 0-2 to Uruguay. To Uruguay. So Ghana did catch an L. Yeah. But the game started with a penalty yeah. awarded to Ghana. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate that penalty? They missed. Any missed penalty is a, is a zero, I rate you know, so at the end of the day, you must have been the narrative lives on. Luis Suarez was was was, was right. He was, he was like you know like he like probably spoke like with smiling inside like you know mm-hmm. felt the happiest he ever was. But at the end of the day, he wasn't happy and you, tears. Your guy went one up with yeah. the Luis Suarez assist. Yeah. And two no up. I think it was a Luis Suarez goal. No, no, no. It was both scored by D. Arashit. How do oh, you say his name? It? Was it an assist by him? Yeah, it was probably an assist was... by him. Yeah, people were saying he was bowling out that game and he was just rewinding the years out of pure hate. You know, <laughs> and I'm not hey, hey. I think the I'm not gonna deny that. I think I've never seen that man play like that for many <laughs> years. I think the Ghanaian team had what it took to win that game. Yes. But they didn't grab the opportunity. Yeah, I think the after, wheels just started falling off. After that miss penalty, it's just like contrast to Senegal. Like Senegal concedes, they come back and score a yeah. goal. Ghana misses a penalty, you just go into your shell and you're 100%. like, not this again. Like, you know, and Ghana really needed this win, yeah. but <coughs> yeah, a win is a win, yeah, <laughs> because the results from the other game meant that even though Ghana lost, yeah, both Ghana and Uruguay are knocked out. So, it was a South Korea. South Korea said, if Ghana aren't making it through, you aren't making it yeah. through Uruguay. And we're going to take the W. Um, so we went back down now because we had three wins, two teams qualify, took us on those roller coaster back down. Ghana didn't do the yeah. things. And then all hopes were left on Cameroon mm. versus Brazil. 
the last African team, could they make it? Um, Cameroon needed that win as yeah. well. They needed a win and they needed a draw from the Serbia-Switzerland yeah. game. Cameroon did the things they needed to do. Crazy, though. They beat Brazil. The number one, one. Number one ranked team in the world, you see. Cameroon beat Brazil. Yeah. One nil, And they are the first African nation to catch a dub against Brazil. At a World Cup or like in just, all time? Just in general. Crazy. No, that's... If you're a Cameroonian, you definitely have to be in the comments. Go off. Bragging. Go off. Go off. Go Literally... Off. The moment you walk out the door today, be like, "Oh, you know, we beat Cameroon." You know, do you, did your yeah. team beat Cameroon? I mean, did your team beat Brazil? Brazil, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, it's just excitement. Hundred like, percent. I'd be bragging off to everyone. I would live off this forever. Yeah. But as I said, like Cameroon beat Brazil one 0 It would have been nice if the other yeah. game also played a part. Almost but, did. And yeah. almost did. Yeah, almost. Did. Very close, but yeah. it didn't, which meant that Cameroon are knocked out. But yeah. again. Like Tunisia, a win is a win. A win is a win. They won the fight and lost the war. Yeah. But, but I they mean, still beat Brazil. Add to your football heritage. It is. Know, and we love to see it for African nations. And do you know what I think people are going to say? They're going to look, inter- try and interrogate the Brazilian team put yeah, out. Yeah, be like, oh no, they were already put through. So this, this, this. No, this, but this. like also like the players that they fielded. Yeah, the so like it's the second string. But those like, are solid players. At the end of the day, these are solid players who play in Europe and like, you know, all of this yeah. narrative. Play for the number one ranked team in the world, and you still get beaten by Cameroon. And twenty years from now, no one's going to look at the players and yeah. the lineup. They're going to look at the stats, and the stats are going to show Cameroon beat Brazil one 0 and the goal scored by the one and only Abu Bakr. He's him, Vincent. He's him. He is that guy. Yeah. He's definitely the guy that He's he scored the goal, and I think out of pure joy and excitement, yeah. took off his shirt, yeah. got a second yellow. Yeah. And got sent off. Yeah. Red card. Got sent off. It was crazy. Off. It was crazy. Because I feel like, I think when he scored the goal, the Serbia-Switzerland game was done at that point. Was it? Possibly. No, but I don't think so. I think they went into extra time. No, because he scored it like in the 97th minute of extra time. So okay. I don't know. Like, it could have been a situation where the other game, like, the results just, already happened. Matter. So he knew, like... It doesn't matter. Let me just take my shirt off, bro, and show these people. There were multiple times yeah. that Cameroon went knocking on the door. Yeah. And that Brazilian goalkeeper made saves. But equally, the Cameroonian goalkeeper made some magnificent acrobatic mm, saves mm. to keep Cameroon in the game. And I don't like, I was trying to find a better way to explain this feeling of yeah. like, even though you lost, you won. Even though, yeah. That's basically what it is. It's like, you even know, when, you, you lost, you when you're in a relationship. Okay. So, like, say I met Drake. Oh, right. And then Drake. And I decided to date. Okay. And then we break up. You still dated Drake. I still dated Drake. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I still dated Drake. So that was the wrap to the final games in the group stages. And we are going towards um, knockout stages. Out of the five African teams, two teams qualified. But special shout out to Tunisia for beating France and Cameroon for beating um, Brazil. And this is the... Continent as the continent Africa, continent's um, best ever group stage performance since 2014. Crazy. So Crazy. out of okay. the five teams, we have two teams that qualified to knockout stages. Going up. Um, yes. We're going to see them. And I, I have faith in, in Senegal and Morocco. Morocco to make it through the round of 16 and possibly make a deep round of competition. Um, it's kind of crazy because in 2014, it was Algeria and Nigeria. Algeria and Nigeria, yeah. a North African and a West African team. Mm-hmm. In 2022, it's Morocco and Senegal, Senegal yeah. a North African and West African team. Mm-hmm. We're not going to have that chat now, but there's there's something cooking up there yeah. on the top part of Africa, North Africa and West Africa, because their football is going on. But we are going into the round of 16. As you said, Morocco versus Spain, Senegal versus England. Um, hot, like, Who do you think is going to win? I think Senegal have the, the, the ability to beat England. Mm-hmm. It will be a tougher match. Mm-hmm. I think Morocco can definitely beat Spain. Even okay. though Spain started their tournament off with like a 7-0 win and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's too high. I think that Spanish team lacks something. Okay. You know, they play amazing football, but like they lack something. And compared to the Moroccan team, Moroccan team has that dog in them, you know, and they want to prove something. So 
Morocco will be the ones to watch going forward. Drop a comment. Let us know what you thought about the last round of the group stages. If you're from Cameroon, if you're from Tunisia, come through and celebrate in our comments. As I said, a win is a win. Mm -hmm. A win is a win. Also, let us know predictions for Morocco versus Spain, England versus Senegal. Are these two African teams going to make a deep run in what possibly could be the best World Cup that I've ever watched mm -hmm. in my entire life? And I'm like a little bit old. So I've seen quite a few World Cups. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It is all love. We are the bench and this is the World Cup.